Hello everybody, I'm Hannah Hager, the Content Director at Call Center IQ, and I am here with Liz Osborne. She's the VP of Product and Solution Marketing at 59, and we are at the 15th Annual Call Center Week here in Las Vegas. Welcome. Thanks so much, Hannah. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Would you mind providing a brief overview of what 59 does? Sure. We're actually one of the leading providers in the cloud contact center space. Uh, we offer inbound, outbound, blended um, voice services, mm -hmm. contact center infrastructure, and now we've added multi-channel just as of yesterday. Great. Can't wait to hear about it. So let's start a little bit about how you align technology with business strategy. I think it, sometimes there's a disconnect there. So what are some of your tips for making sure that call centers or customer care centers can achieve that balance? Sure. I actually have three great tips for customer service centers. Uh, the first is to look for technology that helps increase revenue, that really improves cross-sell and upsell. A lot of our customers now are moving to this model in customer service, so they're self-sufficient, and you're operating from a position of strength when it's a profit center mm -hmm. as opposed to a cost center. The next is to look for technology that works across all of the channels, not just for your customer, but for all of the roles in the, in the contact center. So for your agents, for the administrators, for management, you need that holistic view across all of the channels that you get with a unified platform and a unified interface. Perfect. And then finally, it's a little difficult given the first two, uh, tips, <laughs> but let's keep it simple. That, uh, the, that complexity is the enemy when it comes to customer service, and we really have to think about it from the customer's point of view. Uh, again, a unified inter interface, uh, keep it simple for the agents, and keep it simple for the customer. That's a very good point, keeping it simple. I think that's something we all need to try to remember. Yeah. So speaking of multi-channel, as you said, what does the next generation of multi-channel look like for you, interaction look like to you? Well, I, I think this is something that I'm really excited and passionate about. Um, it's something that I've been looking at for a number of years. And I think the first thing is that we have to recognize customers don't think about channels, right? You're only thinking about communicating with the company, but it's all one company mm -hmm. to the customer. And they don't understand why if I'm talking to you on social media and then I pick up the phone or live chat or go into the store, you have no memory of what I just did. Right. And all of the customers understand the technology is available, and they don't understand why the companies aren't implementing it. So context, the ability to seamlessly move from one channel to the other and still have that memory of what's happened before, I think that's one of the main things that we'll be looking at in the future. The other things are things like um, predictive behavior based on buying patterns, um, looking at being able to take that context and add a number of other external triggers, customer history, skills, uh, a number of other SLAs, mm -hmm. and make real-time decisions about how to treat that customer to send them to the best resource available. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, it actually is. I can't wait to see what the future looks like. So let's talk about some of your game-changing technology. You just launched a new program, a new suite. Mm -hmm. Will you tell us about it and how some of these examples can save time and money and increase business ROI. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, we just released what we call the Summer Release 2014 for 59, and essentially we've taken what we think is a, a very unique and transformative approach to multi-channel. Um, we have now email, chat, social, uh, visual IVR, mobile, um, and it's all powered by a unique set of technologies that we call 59 Connect. Um, five Nine Connect is essentially, well, I think it's a secret weapon in the mm -hmm. contact center to allow contact centers to really uh, focus their resources on the highest priority interactions. It includes uh, natural language processing that helps mm -hmm. contact centers understand what's important, relevant, and trending in all of the text channels, social, email, mm -hmm. chat. Uh, it includes business rules to apply your, your policies and be able to decide where that interaction should go and what priority it should mm -hmm. take. And then finally, it includes a number of agent assistance tools to allow the agent to res quickly resolve what the issue is, um, whether it's a customer service or a sales issue. Mm -hmm. And so those are sort of the three pillars of 5.9 Connect. 
And we believe it's really going to kind of change the game in the contact center. It's going to allow contact centers to focus resources and improve their business outcomes. Sounds great. I'd love to hear about that. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges that call centers face. What are the what are the biggest challenges that you keep hearing about or keep coming across? And how are these call centers failing to maximize upon the technology that they're currently using or that's currently available to them? Well, I think about the challenges in three different buckets, if you will. The first is in regards to the customer. The second is in regards to the agents themselves and making them productive. And then the third is the operations around the contact center. So um, with the customer, of course, the, the challenge is just servicing them in the, in the channel that they really desire. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did a survey of both customers, consumers, and, and contact centers. And we got some really interesting data. Um, customers said um, over 50% of them would move to a competitor if they, the competitor offered a channel that that the current company did. That makes sense, like SMS ability. Absolutely, or social. Mm -hmm. More and more people want to be served on social. Right. And in fact, 60% of the companies that we surveyed, the contact centers, said they thought it was a competitive differentiator mm -hmm. to have customer service and social, yet 60% of them aren't servicing right. in social. So right. there's some big gaps there. So that's, that's a challenge both for the customer and for uh, the right. contact centers. When it comes to the agents, there's a number of challenges as well with this growing complexity, all the different channels. Mm -hmm. Most contact centers are still in silos, so they have different applications for chat. If they do do social, they have a different application than what they have in voice. Mm -hmm. And our survey also found that uh, agents have to, it was like something like 50%, more than 50%, have to use more than four applications to service a customer. Mm -hmm. And many of them use up to 15. And if you've been in a contact center as much as I have, and you see these guys having to flip through screens, it makes it very difficult for oh, the agent. Yeah. And it's not, it's incredibly non productive exactly. for an agent, and it's frustrating for a customer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be more and more of a challenge as, as we continue to expand the channels. And then finally, operationally, again, it gets back to having that holistic look across mm -hmm. channels. That's also very challenging, especially when you have silo channels, trying to figure out, you know, even what the customer journey is and figuring out what what the uh, percentages are and, and your SLAs across channels can be very challenging when you're using four or five different applications. Absolutely, yeah. So just the end goal to try to streamline everything and be able to have it internally and externally and being able to talk to each other. Absolutely. We have a unified thing. platform. Yes, basically. exactly, exactly. It's also an issue to phase out legacy platforms and technologies, but that's a whole different issue, isn't it? Yeah. So let's talk about the future. What do you think the future holds for call centers? Hmm. I actually think that it's getting more and more exciting every year that I've been doing this, and I've been doing it for more years than <laughs> I would care to admit. Uh, I love the words of Peter Drucker. He says that um, the whole goal of business is to create and keep customers. And I think as in the future, as time goes on and companies are understanding that the customer and customer service is a competitive differentiator, that contact centers have more and more of a strategic role to play in being that kind of uh, creating and keeping customer service and becoming a, a profit center and right. more strategic to the business. So I think it's exciting times ahead. I agree. I can't wait for next year. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.